Hello friends! We're kicking off our Friday with the start of an at-home reading retreat. This weekend's weather is going to be not the best. We're gonna see some snow I think and definitely below freezing temperatures so we're gonna stay at home and read. I have a stack of library books I am hoping to get through. I'm hoping to read at least three of these five books. I'm currently reading Family Lore by Elizabeth Acevedo. This follows the story of a Dominican family and one of them has a gift and she's able to predict when people are going to die and she has seen her own death so she is planning her own living wake. She kind of follows the the past and the present of this family's life told through the lens of the women. It's interesting but I'm having a hard time following the perspective so I might put this one down if I'm not gripped in the next couple of chapters. I'm about 70 pages in. I'm hoping to get to Yellow Face by R.F. Kuang. My boyfriend was reading it, this book and the way he was describing it to me I was like I, I've got to give this a try because I don't think I've read a book with like an unreliable narrator per se. Definitely very few books where the main character is like a really bad person. Um, so I'm very curious about this book. For the third book, I'm not sure which one I want to read. I may read How to Be Remembered by Michael Thompson first because it's due the soonest because I got it with my first batch of library books I checked out. But also I have Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies by Heather Fawcett and Normal Rules Don't Apply by Kay Atkinson. And this book is a collection of short stories. So it's very very thin. It's pretty short so I could easily get through this one so I might pick this one up but I'm not, I'm not sure yet. And so we are kicking off our Friday night by having a little celebration party I guess. But we need to figure out dinner because uh, our chicken our chicken is never thawed you know. I feel like I said this last time but like we were waiting like days for chicken to thaw. I have tea on the kettle because I took the biggest nap from the hours of like 2 to 6. I'm just so incredibly tired today so I need some like green tea to wake me up. And yeah, I'm looking forward to getting some reading done. We also have some board games we want to play. Peter checked out a board game from the library. He also checked out some books from the library he wants to read. So we, we've, we're kind of set. We also got like a bunch of snacks from Trader Joe's. So we got a lot of fun stuff to get us through the weekend. And I'm, I'm just looking forward to hanging out. So that's enough talking for me. Here are the snacks we have this weekend. I got some mozzarella cheese sticks because I don't know, I wanted them. Something about them was calling them to me. I'm realizing everything I chose has cheese in it. That's very telling about me. I also picked out these cheese blintzes. I remember eating these at like a fundraiser I went to for my parents and I had so many of them. Brought me back. I also picked out the mini almost everything bagel sandwich crackers because they sounded fun. Peter picked out mini vegetable samosas, peanut butter crispy rice bites, and the crispy crunchy mochi rice nuggets. And then we also had a Danish Kringle in the freezer, so I've taken that out. And we'll bake this probably at some point this weekend. So those are our yummy snacks. <laughs>
the blinds it is like it is like really coming down now oh my goodness good morning friends it is about noon um, so I guess not really morning anymore. But I figured I'd give a little update. I've read about 60 pages since last night. I spent some time reading family lore last night and this morning. I feel like I'm having a really hard time getting into this book. A family lore is told over the course of six perspectives of different family members. We learn about their trauma, their kind of magical realism powers. It's told through the voice of one character um, and they interject occasionally in the narration and I feel like I'm having a really hard time getting into it and I'm having a hard time keeping characters straight. And I, I can tell this book is like well written but I'm, I just am not jiving with it as much as I would like to. I may come back to it but I decided to put this one down. I definitely want to read another Elizabeth Acevedo book. I know this is her debut into adult so maybe um, her adult writing just isn't my style. I still haven't read Clap When You Land, it's right behind me. And I know that's written in verse. This is, this book is not written in verse, but the, the formatting is also not linear. Um, there are definitely paragraphs that are like indented. Things are just moving around the page a little bit. I decided to put that one down and I picked up Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies by Heather Fawcett. This book just feels very cozy, very light. It takes place in a, I believe it's a Scandinavian country. So it kind of takes place in the real world, but it's not modern by any means. Um, Emily Wilde is a professor from London. She studies in dryadology and um, she's going to find the fair folk in the fae, in the fairies of this Scandinavian country and add them into an, and add them into an, I can't say this right now and add them into an encyclopedia. However, her colleague, friend, rival, person, man, shows up one day and kind of makes her plans go awry. So this is just supposed to be really cute and cozy. Um, I'm definitely getting the like dark Scandinavian wool sweater feel from it, which is kind of nice on this like snowy day. Um, so I'm kind of having fun with this one. But yeah, that's kind of where I'm at right now. I feel like I'm having a hard time connecting to books Peter says I should go read one of his Sandman comics and I honestly might if I am struggling to get through Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies. I feel like I've been in a reading slump for a little bit. I just haven't been jiving with anything um, since I finished my first two books of the year. I think I'm going to move upstairs momentarily and just sit on my chair um, and do a bit of reading. So let's go do that. day we are officially on sunday to give a little update on where we are at i did finish one book yesterday i finished emily wilde's encyclopedia of fairies by heather fawcett this book is very cute and cozy it follows the story of emily wilde she's a dryadologist and she goes to the scandinavian country to study the fair folk and her plans are shortly ruined by her colleague slash rival wendell bambleby and like in most cozy fantasies, not much happens. It's kind of like this slice of life. We see Emily's processes and just kind of day in the life stuff while she's in this Scandinavian country. I thought it was great for a snow day, uh, but I know that's a heavy criticism of the book is that it's just boring. I thought it was cute. I really enjoy books 
that have good settings and kind of take me away to another place and that's what I felt like this did like I was like I need to have myself a loaf of bread and smoked fish I need to put on my wool jumper and get all cozy and this th this is what that book made me feel like I think I rated it 3.75 stars pretty good I think I would read the sequel and we are just getting our morning started and I think I'm gonna start yellow face once we finish the books yesterday I finished my book and Actually, Peter's book is right here. Peter finished Redemption's Blade by Adrian Tchaikovsky last night. We finished our books at about like 10, and then we went and played Terraria <laughs> for the remainder of the night, just to break up some of the reading activities. Today, I think I'm gonna pick up Yellow Face by R.F. Kuang. This is a book I've been meaning to read for a long time. I feel like all of R.F. Kuang's books are books I've been meaning to read for a while. And recently, I finally read The Poppy War, and I was like, I'm gonna try Yellow Face next because Peter started it first and had me interested. And yeah, I think we're, we're gonna go ahead and get started on coffee and breakfast first. broke for lunch and about halfway through yellow face at this point and the thing about R. Kong is she really knows how to write a book that gets you to turn the page like a good page turner I feel like when I read the poppy war I just could not put it down and I feel the same way about this book and yellow face is just it's dark but funny and so infuriating I feel like those are the best words to to describe it. We follow June. June is a uh, not so successful author um, in comparison to her her friend Athena. In, in a freak accident, Athena dies, and June steals her manuscript to her next book and ends up editing it and publishing it under her own name. This this book just I feel like has me stressed. It has me angry. It. It really gets you feeling things and um, you just you just can't put it down and with each each new uh, event in the story I find my my jaw is just dropped I'm like June is a crazy lady and <laughs> it, it's a, an interesting read it's an interesting perspective to read this from the lens of a really bad person and and i'm curious how it's gonna wrap up and now we we are making some tea and we are about to play a board game today is peter's choice of a board game uh he's got woodcraft on the table over there and i assume this is gonna take us two hours to play at least <laughs> at least two hours to play so i'm a little scared it's a game we picked up from the library We've been checking out lots of books and board games from the library, which is, has been such a great time because we get to experience so many new and different things that we wouldn't have normally picked out before. So we're we are gonna set this board game up and have some fun with it. up in your first sawing spot. This and place it face up in the top splicing space in the upper right side of your shop. This? Yes. finished yellow face about a couple hours ago this was kind of wild i feel like in the last like third part of the book i feel like i i was getting a little bit bored with it just kind of like the same things keep happening the same events are repeated and it's almost like i'm feeling like i'm being beaten over the head with it um but overall i thought it was good so there's that and i'm thinking i may start another book tonight i'm thinking about starting how to be remembered by michael thompson this is about a boy who is forgotten about 
uh, once a year, every year. It sounds sad, so we'll see. But I think I'm the first person to open up this library book, which is so cool. I think this book is new to the library as of January, because it says new Jan. But this released in June of last year, I think, so it's pretty new. But uh, I just like opened it up to slide my bookmark in, and I'm like, wow feel so new. I feel pretty accomplished after reading two books. I'm like, yeah, that's good. And so now I feel like I'm kind of out of my reading zone, but we'll see. I'll try to make some progress in my new book. Hey friends, it is the next day. We basically ended the night just chilling, watching TV. I read, I think a little over 700 pages and I'm like pretty proud of that because I feel like I've been in like a reading slump these last couple of weeks. Like I started the year off really strong and I read two books within the first couple of days of the year and then I just hadn't been able to click with anything else. So it was really nice to just take some time to just sit there and read to wrap up. I, I think I'm gonna DNF family lore. I may come back around to it, but the, the book is gonna be due to the library soon. So I think I may just return it. I just could not get into the perspective of the book. I was having a really hard time um, following with that, but it was genuinely pretty well written and I would love to try another Elizabeth Acevedo book and I may do that soon. Um, I completed, uh, what's that book? Mm, it has such a long title, I can't remember the name of it. Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies by Heather Fawcett. I enjoyed that book. It was quite cozy and perfect for a snow day. I thought it was cute, but not much happened as in cozy fantasy. So if you're not super into kind of that cozy kind of vibe of a fantasy novel, I wouldn't recommend that book for you. But I thought it was cute and fun and Wendell Bambleby reminded me so much of Assyrian from Baldur's Gate 3, just the way he spoke and like his demeanor. I thought it was really funny just to just to picture him as Assyrian. And then I also completed Yellow Face by Arif Kwong. Arif Kwong really knows how to get you to keep reading her books and be invested. I feel like both Arif Kwong books I've read, I was not able to put down. It was just so gripping. And Yellow Face was incredibly infuriating and had, it was, it was a wild ride. The latter end of the book, just about the, the last third of the book, I was kind of slowing down with it. I felt like I was becoming a little bit repetitive with the behavior patterns of June. But overall, I thought it was really entertaining, really angering, and pretty thought provoking. And then lastly, I started uh, How to Be Remembered by Michael Thompson. This book so far is pretty sad. I'm about 50 pages in and I, I'm like, wow, this is, this is gonna be a sad book. Every year, uh, Tommy is forgotten on his birthday. He just is completely reset. No one remembers him. All of his government documents are gone. They never existed. It was like he was never even there for the past year. So every year he is forgotten and has to rebuild his life. And so far it, it's, it's pretty sad. So I'm curious where the book will go and I'm looking forward to reading some more of it. Today's Monday and Peter has the day off from work. So we're just gonna hang out, chill. I'm trying to get back into being physically active, that's why I'm wearing this. But I just wanted to wrap up and say thank you all so much for watching. I will be releasing a blog post uh, this week. I'll link it below because it should be up by the time this video is uploaded about how to have the best reading retreat at home. This is my second time doing one of these at home reading retreats and they're just so much fun. So see my blog post for more encouragement on how to have a great reading retreat and I will see you all next time. Bye!